everyone, welcome to uh, Chef's Travels. I'm Kevin Harrington and today I'm going to be making one of my favourite dishes. It's Persian lamb, also known as a gourmet sabzi. Um, you can use beef if you want or chicken, but then it won't be Persian lamb, it'll be beef or Persian beef or Persian chicken. But today we're going to use lamb because it is one of my favourite meats. And um, yeah, so let me show you what we've got here. So the ingredients I'm using today are some dried limes, which I'll put into soak for about 15 to half minutes to half an hour. A lime, some spring onions, some chopped parsley. Might look like a lot, but you'll see that it isn't in a minute when I'll show you what we do with it. Some diced onion, roughly diced onion. Some fresh coriander, chopped up. Some nice, Diced, fresh diced lamb. Now I'm using uh, ghee, which is just an oil basically. You can use uh, a nut oil or um, fresh vegetable oil, whichever, whatever suits you. I like ghee, I just love the flavour. And also some tomato puree and a tin of kidney beans. So without further ado, let's begin the show. So first things first, put the heat on. Take some ghee or oil if you're going to use oil. Put your oil in there. Give it a chance to melt. Put the fan on because it gives off a bit of smoke. And put your onions in. And what we want to do is try and brown them off a little bit because um, they actually have a better flavour when they're brown. It brings the sweetness out of the onion. So as you can see, the onions are starting to turn brown now. What I'm going to do is add some fresh garlic, which I didn't mention at the beginning, but also some fresh garlic, roughly chopped. That's going to go in. Give that a little stir. I don't like to put the garlic in too early because it burns and I don't like to take the burnt garlic, it loses everything it's got. Next thing I do is put the meat in. Salt. Fresh ground pepper. Give that a good stir and let it mix in. Again, I'm using lamb because I love lamb. You can use beef if you want. You can even make it with fish as well, but it's a different technique which I'll probably be doing in another video. Um, and it's served with rice, again, which I'll be showing you how to cook the perfect rice in a different video. Um, if you'd like to see some more of these recipes, please don't forget to subscribe, or just give me a cheeky little thumbs up. Every little helps, as they say, and it would be really appreciated. So basically what we're doing is trying to brown a little bit of this meat off. takes for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, just browning it off basically, getting all the flavours in there. 
smell of it is absolutely gorgeous. Just makes me feel like eating it now, but it's just being impatient in it. If it gets to about this stage, what you want to do now, put in about three cups of water. Give that a little stir, and then what we're going to do is going to leave it on the back burner to cook for probably about an hour. Put a lid on it if you've got one. that over there to cook for about an hour. In the meantime the next thing we're going to do is cook our herbs. So you get your pan hot. Some oil in it. Not too much because you don't want it too greasy. Just enough to cook it. You're actually sauteing the herbs strange as it may seem but it's a very important part of this dish to make sure you do this because otherwise you just get a completely wrong flavour and also texture and colour and everything else that goes with it. So basically just let the, this is actually ghee which is clarified butter and uh, the reason I like it is you can actually get it to a very high heat without it actually burning and the flavour as well, it's a lovely flavour. The next thing we do take the chopped parsley and that all goes in. It might look might look a lot, it might look a lot, but this is all gonna break down and become pretty much nothing. So don't be too worried. You're not gonna fit it all in the pan. Coriander goes in as well. And also the spinach should go in in that last thing because I don't want to put it in too early. Seasoning. This is going to cook for about 45 minutes um, until you get a very deep texture, texture, and also until it's basically cooked um, to a different level. So the spinach and coriander has been cooking for about 10 minutes now. As you can see, it's starting to reduce right, right down. And what I'm going to do now is add the spinach. Again, don't worry that the pan is over full because it's going to break down and pretty much reduce to nothing in the end. You want to get as much as possible in there. A good little pat down. At this stage I'm also going to put my fenugreek, dried fenugreek leaves in there. If you've got fresh fenugreek, fantastic, all the better, really hard to come by but if you have got it, much better. If you're having trouble getting uh, dry fenugreek leaves, we do actually have it on our chefstravel.com website and uh, yeah, you can order it online from us. So just put
as you can see that is all breaking down nicely but it's still got quite a long way to go and it's now starting to take effect start to change color and the flavors are really starting to come through now and this is the stage you need to get it to before you can use it otherwise it will be a total waste of time because it just will not have the same effect so what i'm going to do now i've had these cheeky little fellas soaking for about half hour to 45 minutes they're dried limes and they're what gives this dish its pungency and the true persian taste and the way to do it is leave them soak for about, soak for about half hour and then basically just prick them with a fork Try not to get your fingers at the same time and literally just dump them in there. Some people eat these when they're cooked, some people don't. I love them, so anyone who doesn't eat theirs, that's more for me, fantastic. Then I always have been a bit weird. So they go in like that. Basically you want to try and cook them as long as possible so that they start to um, let all their flavours out. And again, so important to make sure that you cook this parsley and the uh, basically herbs, coriander, uh, for at least 45 minutes until it takes that change. And the flavour is absolutely completely different. If you don't like coriander, then believe me, you wouldn't even know it's in here because it does actually change the taste completely. But if you don't like coriander, then leave it out. And, uh, as I say, if you need to get some of these ingredients, like these dried limes, they're all on the Chef's Travels website. Just go to chefstravels.com and uh, we've got an online shop which supplies all these products. And also the recipes are there. So if you wanna read the recipe as you go along rather than watch it on video then you can also do that it's reduced down a hell of a lot and it's starting to take on a sort of like a brownie color and um, at this stage what I'm going to do is squeeze half a lime in there and also half a lemon. Try not to get the pips in there as well. And at this point, I'm also gonna put the kidney beans in. If you can get fresh kidney beans and soak dried so kidney beans and soak them overnight and uh, use them, even better. Otherwise, tin kidney beans will do just fine. Just run the tether juice out of them. Otherwise it gets to a bit different texture to what it should be. Now this recipe is one that I've put together pretty much myself using um, inspiration from other chefs. It's probably a little bit different to a traditional Iranian dish, completely, you know, exactly to the, to, to the point. But it's exactly how I like it and it's a lovely take on it. And there's a couple of extra things in there, like I don't think the Iranians actually use celery in theirs. Um, probably not spring onions either but generally speaking you know what is rule to thumb these days with cooking a little bit of adventure never went and missed it so at this stage what I'm also going to do is add some tomato puree Quite a generous amount. A little trick I use for these tubes is to get yourself a spoon and fold the end over. You can also do this with your toothpaste as well and then all you do is just turn it like that and it squeezes out and it also doesn't waste so much. So as you can see don't want it too tomatoey because it's not really a tomato dish. And that's about enough. So basically this has been cooking for about 45 minutes. 
to get it to this stage. That's no water or anything added to it, basically just steaming off its own juices and reducing down. So what we're going to do at this stage, the meat has been boiling away for about an hour now and it's pretty much tender enough to start going to the next stage. So all we're going to do basically is add all this to the meat. There is still a bit of juice in the meat as you can see, it's not all dried up. So we're going to add this to it and then we need to leave this for about another half hour to all cook down and reduce and uh, let all those flavours emulgate into each other. So basically turn the heat down a little bit and leave it to cook for about another half hour. So it's been cooking for about another half hour 45 minutes and as you can see it's all reduced down and it is pretty much ready now. Fantastic texture, the smell is absolutely marvellous. And what we're going to do, take it off the heat and serve it up.